All right, so we're at the 2022 MLB draft, and I'm going to run through a few picks of this draft because one of the things I get asked about most often is drafting. And I have a couple of videos from Out of the Park 21 on drafting, and those videos still have relevant info, but drafting is one of those things that you get better at it the more you do it and the more experience you have, kind of like experience and repetition type of thing. So with each pick and each draft, you know, you're faced with a different set of choices. There's often multiple players that are worth picking in your spot that you'll be considering, and each player has their pros and cons. So really just kind of thinking through those decisions and practicing it over and over is, is the best way to get better at it. And there's not often one clean answer for the type of player you should pick or the player you should absolutely go for. There, there might be a right pick, but like I said, each player is going to have pros and cons and kind of determining what type of players you like and the types of things that types of players that you gravitate towards. It, it'll help you make better draft choices. So in this video, I'm going to go through a couple um, early round picks, a couple mid round picks and a couple late round picks just to show you my thought process at those different points in the draft. And before we make those picks, a few guidelines to kind of keep in mind. One is I don't draft for need. If my farm system is short on pitching, I'm not going to go out and deliberately choose pitchers in the draft. And, you know, it might be a tie-breaking type factor. It might be something I consider, but I still want to be taking the best player available. That Just the way player development works in baseball, it's not like the NFL or the NBA where the dude you take in the first round is likely to be starting on your team the next year. They're probably years away. So don't draft for need. Need can change over time. Just develop the best players you can. And I'm going to go here to the draft pool. And I, I have a couple default draft filters that I've set up. And I like to have work ethic and intelligence on these to be able to sort by them and see them because both of the, they, they aren't going to be the main driving force of a pick. But both work ethic and intelligence can impact player development. So drafting players with high work ethic or high intelligence can be beneficial. And one other tip is you're going to want to keep an eye on players who are listed as pitchers who may be good hitters and players listed as hitters that may be good pitchers. You can find value on players this way. For example, there may be a pitcher who is, say, you know, a 20th round talent. But if you look at his hitting stats, he may be worth hitting much, much worth picking much earlier than that. So here's a way to find these players. You can see I am set on pitchers here. I'm filtered by pitchers, but my filter is uh, set to batting stats, so batting potential. And what I can do here is I can just sort by some batting tools, and I've got a starting pitcher here who has 60s across the board for batting except for power. He's a 40. So above average potential in most categories. You see as a pitcher, he's not really probably ever going to be a major league pitcher like i mean he's 22 so how much more is he going to develop and but if you look at his ratings here this bat well you know it's, this isn't a guy you'll be taking in the first round especially mainly because well not mainly but one of the reasons being because he's not going to have a positional home he can't play anywhere he's a designated hitter so this bat really has to develop at least to the full potential but He's a player when you're looking, you know, I don't know. I'm just going to throw it. Who knows? The seventh round, right? Say there's nobody you love in the seventh round. Good time to take a look at a guy like this who's fallen through the cracks because of the fact that he's listed as a pitcher. You can do the same things with hitters. You can get all batters. And then I'm going to go to my um, pitching uh, filter and sort by stuff. You don't want to sort by potential because that actually sorts, you know, this is their bat potential as a batter or overall as a player. But so you want to sort by the tools. And... You know, there's nobody here with a 50 above a 50 stuff potential. There might, if these guys fall a while and you're looking at lesser players, they might be worth taking a flyer on. But there's nobody here who's who's jumping out as too exciting. Movement. This guy's got a 70 movement, 55 potential, but a 25 stuff. Good lord, John Dyer, way to go, man. So in this draft, I've chosen the Royals, and the reason I've chosen the Royals is because their scout is. Excellent at scouting amateurs, and he highly favors tools. I prefer scouts who highly favor tools instead of uh, favoring ability because these types of scouts are more likely to identify superstar players, and I, those are the hardest type of players to find. All right, so let's get down to some picks. Okay, so the Royals are picking 23rd in the first round. We do not have a supplemental round pick, 
and then we're 21st in the second round and then also a comp compensation pick 32nd overall in the 32nd in the second round so i'm going to run through those three picks and then we'll skip to some later rounds and so let's go ahead to start draft and the rockies have the first pick i'm not going to go through all those picks what we're going to do is auto draft until our pick and i'm going to say as a disclaimer for this video ignore the scouting accuracy i just simmed to this draft and i wasn't in charge of the scouting for the royals i'm not playing a sim with the royals and for some reason everybody's low scouting accuracy so the good thing is it's even across the board right if the difference between low and high makes a difference here which i know in 21 people suggested that there wasn't a huge difference in the scouting reports on players when they were low or very high accuracy but if there is a difference everybody's got the same kind of penalty here so we're just gonna assume that you know we were in charge of this team and the scouting accuracy isn't actually low we're just going to kind of ignore it so to speak but it doesn't change the way we're going to draft so here we are 23rd pick and i think i always start by just saying who does my scouting director recommend and so he's recommending and let me go to my draft default here just all batters so he's recommending carson applegate who is one of the several 50 potential hitters left. He's a high school shortstop. He's uh, only demanding 500,000, which is under slot. The slot is three point something million. So you can save some money on him, which is a good thing. It, it, you don't have to do that, but if you wanna maybe spend over slot on other players and slot being, there's a bonus demand that every player has, and then every pick has a slot value right so if we go to our draft order it tells you what the slot value is for a pick and you also have to keep in mind your budget room for a pick so we have 13 million dollars to spend the rest of the season as a team what the royals have alloc allocated to the draft is 10.9 million so but really we can spend uh over that too because we have 13 million for free agents so we're not too worried about slot here we've got plenty of money allocated but you can play around with the slot if you want, if you're tight on budget or, it, you know, you can always pick a guy, pick guys that are under slot like this guy, Applegate. He wants like three million under his slot because his slot is like three point three, almost three and a half. And he wants just half a million. So that's under slot. Over slot is somebody who wants more than the slot amount. Their demand is worth more than the uh, recommended slot. So he wants Applegate. And, you know, I think this is a pretty good player uh his range of 60 is not ideal for a shortstop love the air the arms fine uh you know i don't know that he's going to be a gold glove shortstop which is something to consider for sure but he can play he's going to be able to play left field right field second base really well i he can play a fine third base with that arm obviously he can play first and he can serve as a guy who's fine at shortstop and center field if you need him. He can really play all over the diamond. And you can see he's also got some pitching, uh, some decent pitches here, but his pitching ratings are not very good. And as a bat, as a high school bat, man, like, you know, this is a pretty decent player. And I do like, I do like drafting guys. I know I said I don't draft for positional need, but I do like to draft guys who can play all over the diamond a bit. Now, Applegate isn't ideal because he can't play the two of the premier positions, shortstop or center field. Well, he could play it. He can get away with it, but he's not going to be a gold glove difference maker for you at those positions. So that's kind of one thing I don't love about him. Um, and there are a bunch of shortstops here, man. Uh, this guy's got the same range issue. Uh, I like Applegate better than him. We've got an outfielder here. I'm just kind of going through the 50 potential things. I know I've said in other videos, don't use the overall and the potential as a be all end all when you have a huge cluster of players like you do in a draft it's effective to narrow it down you're not going to look through every player right so it's effective to ballpark the type of player you want to draft so this guy's a corner outfielder whose bat is fine uh as his his ceiling right now hopefully he could you know maybe he could uh improve that and he's got high work ethic normal intelligence applegate's normal and normal and but we've got some other fielders here let's go through them this guy ha is fine i think i still prefer applegate yeah i don't think his bat his field his glove doesn't set him apart from applegate and his bat isn't as good and i mean this guy this guy's glove is great this guy's 
going to play shortstop for you. And can he play outfield as well? Yeah, but not center. So if you wanted to draft for a guy who, if his bat just becomes okay, can be a major league fielder for you, this has got to go with, but I, I don't know. I think you can get guys like this other ways rather than a first round pick, a guy who is like a glove first defender. I don't think you need to spend a first round pick on a guy like this. I think you can go for guys who have higher ceilings with the bat. Uh, all right, we've got Dylan Lina or Lina, and he's not doing a lot for me. I mean, he's fine. His I, I do like some of his tools here, but his glove isn't really doing much for me. I think I still prefer Applegate. This guy's not really doing it. Yeah, no. This guy's more like a first baseman corner outfielder who his bat doesn't set him apart. So yeah, I don't I don't really see anybody who I like more than Applegate here, I don't think, but we can take a look at the pitchers too. Let me just refresh myself on Applegate. Yeah, see, I, he's got above average tools for gap, I, and avoid Ks. He's got average, and I'm talking about his potential, average for contact. His power's fine, and he can play multiple positions. You know, I don't I don't love the pick. I don't think it's a home run pick, but I think he's I think he's decent. So let's let's look at the pitching. Let's see who, so I like to also do this. Who does my scout recommend as a starter? If I wanted to draft a starter, oh, Logan, Logan Forsyth, not to be confused with the uh, former catcher, Logan Forsyth, but he's got a $9.5 million slot demand. Dude, he's pretty good. I mean, this control is awesome. His curveball could be elite. His fastball could be really good, but it's kind of worrying. This is one thing you want to look at with pitchers when their third pitch isn't developed. Now he's 18, maybe he could develop it, but if he doesn't develop it, he's a reliever. And he's a reliever with average stuff. He's not going to strike a lot of guys out. I don't know. I don't love that pick. I mean, if he was asking for slot, maybe I'd think about it, but for $9.5 million, get the absolute out of here, man. <laughs> and then this guy, no movement. Just no movement. I can't. And he wants $7.5 million. I don't know. I'm, I'm not in love with any of these starters. This guy I like. This guy I actually like. And he's got he's got a chance to develop four different pitches. Stuff, movement, control is good. Health status is okay. He only wants five point five million. I don't I don't love him. He doesn't blow me away. This guy's a college pitcher who you know looks like he could probably be an average starter fairly soon for you in the majors. But again. You know, while his pitches are well above average, this stuff movement and control and being 22, he's not, his ceiling is not going to possibly develop as high as a high school player who could really increase their ceiling by a lot more. I think this guy's fine. I would consider picking him. And let's look at a few more of these 55 pitchers. And yeah, I mean, I really think I'd go with Applegate here. I think I think this guy McLeod is a good second pick maybe but his seal i like I'm, I'm biased towards drafting for ceiling and this guy's ceiling is not as high especially being 22 and i'm biased towards hitters as well early in the draft just because you have fewer injuries they're just less likely to have devastating injuries so those are kind of my bias biases and you know applegate maybe i fell in love with him because he was the first guy i saw and he's actually not that much better than these other guys but i, I like I like that he can play solid across multiple positions, and I like that he's only 18, his health status is okay, and he's got normal work ethic and intelligence. Of course, Fancher, I, re I do like that he's got high work ethic and normal intelligence, but he's just a corner outfielder, man. Like, you can find corner outfielders a lot of places. M maybe he could, no, he could kind of fake it as a third baseman with that arm. He's not really going to be able to play second base. Yeah, I would pick Applegate. Applegate's my guy here. I don't love any of these guys, but... This is who I draft. So let's go ahead and draft him. And let's go to our next two picks and see who our... Oh, our guy Fancher's still out there. Nice. So who's our scouting director recommending now? Dylan Lina. This is one guy we looked at last time. Yeah, I don't... Second round, a round later, I don't I don't mind this pick. Oops, wrong tab there. He's not going to be a shortstop for you. He could play third base fine with a 65 arm, I guess. He could play a, a decent second base... Uh, left field, right field, second base, third base. So multiple positions. Again, you'll notice I really like that. And he can play second and or he can play short and center. I just wouldn't want him starting there. This is a pretty good pick, I think. 
at this point in the draft. But let's see what he says for um, starting pitchers, too. I don't look at relievers this early, just in case you were wondering. Justin West. Huh. That's an interesting arm for this point. Again, I'm biased towards stuff and movement, though, over control. I like control, obviously. It's important to have it. But you might like control pitchers better than me and love that guy. Again, I, you know, I just like to kind of talk about the bias that I have and the type of players I prefer because it's not necessarily that control pitchers are bad. It's just I don't prefer to spend high draft picks on them, um, which I recognize has its shortcomings, and there are reasons you might want to do it. And then we've got, also got Nolan Schubert, but this guy is just a corner, man, corner outfielder. Not, I don't love spending early draft capital on guys who are just corner outfielders because I feel like those are the easiest players in the game to find. If Now, if there's a great one, sure, I'll take him with a third overall pick or whatever, you know, if he's, if he's got superstar potential, but these guys aren't. And what about this guy? I like to always check. One thing I like to say is, you know, I'm, I like center fielders and shortstops. So, like, who does my scout recommend as a center fielder? Joshua Jones. Yeah, great fielder, but I don't know about a second round pick on this bat. He might never make the major leagues. So our scout really likes Lina. I mean, I do too. Like this bat for a second round pick and only being a high schooler, this bat is really solid. Uh, and his glove, he's going to be able to play multiple positions for you. Again, not a slam dunk shortstop. Don't love that, but. He's got normal work ethic, normal intelligence. Let's just take a look at the starters. So we've got Justin West, which I believe is a guy I recommended, right? Yeah, I kind of like this guy, though, too. What's his work ethic and intelligence? So normal and normal. I don't know. I, I If I was doing this live, I'd really, you know, be like, all right, what do you guys think? Justin West or... Uh, Dylan Lina. And again, I'm not going to draft a position. I'm not going to say, well, I drafted a shortstop last time, so I'm going to draft a starter now. No, I, I go best player. And I don't know. This is this is you know, this is a tough, tough call here between these two. Justin West, I kind of like. He wants slot. But that's 45 stuff. He's going to have below average stuff. An average movement, which I don't like. He might have none of nothing's elite except for his control. Everything else, it looks like he's going to be around average with great control. Which that could, he could turn into a decent player for you, but I, I like I like Lina better. I've talked myself into Lina. I think I think he has chance to be more of an impact player if he develops, and I think his his ability to at least possibly like a utility player for you who hits well maybe he's a guy who can play versus lefties as a righty bat if he ends up having bad splits i, I that's why i'm going to pick him i think there's a reasonable argument for either guy but i'm going to i'm going to go with my scout here and draft line so now let's go to one more early pick here we have another pick in, in 10 slots maybe we can get our other guy here yeah justin west all right that's who our scout is recommending now this guy's still out here aiden francher Again, just the corner guy. Don't love him. Nolan Schubart. Let's just make sure we're not. I like this. This guy's got a good good bat, but he's not going to play anywhere except he's a bad. I mean, he's a mediocre corner outfielder or a first baseman or a DH. And his bat's fine, but I don't think his bat is good enough for how limited he is defensively. So, yeah, I would go Justin West here and get this pitcher and say thank you very much. Those are our first three picks in the two rounds and feeling pretty good about those selections. So now I'm going to skip ahead to kind of the middle rounds and talk through some of those guys. Actually, I've made an executive decision. I'm going to end this video here because of the fact that it's already around the 20 minute mark. I spent more time on those earlier picks than I anticipated. And I figured it's actually kind of beneficial to talk through the picks in detail like I did. And if I do the middle rounds and the late rounds, this video is going to be longer than I like them to be. I like to keep the tutorial videos on a 10, 20 minutes max uh, based off of what I prefer to watch in videos and also feedback people have given me on them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this video here with the tips and the first picks, and then I will do another video soon on the mid and late round picks and looking at some of those players. Hope you guys liked it. Uh, if you, you know, if you have any thoughts on the draft picks, always, uh, curious to hear what you guys think, where I went right, where I went wrong. And, uh, so let me know and hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for watching.